I began watching NFL football when I was just six years old. I still have memories of the 1981 season and the excitement of the Cowboys' domination of the NFC Conference. My cousins were big Dallas fans, and they smugly believed that no team could stop their destiny of yet another Super Bowl win. Enter Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers. It was the divisional championship when Montana led his team down the field in a come-from-behind victory. With less than a minute remaining in the game, Dwight Clark hauled in the game-winning touchdown, crushing my older cousin's dreams and finally shutting them up. In an instant, Joe Montana had become my hero and made me a 49ers fan for life. Being a big fan of video games, the following years were rough looking for something that captured the same excitement of the real sport. I tried the Atari 2600 releases, but they were just awful. Early attempts on the Master System and the NES weren't all that great either. Even when a game finally came out that was fun, it was far from realistic often having less players on screen, limited playbooks, and the gameplay could be heavily exploited. Even when John Madden Football first showed up for the Apple II computer, it was a slow mess of a game that just held no appeal to me at all. But in November of 1990, Electronic Arts released John Madden Football for the Sega Genesis, and with that, the world of video game football changed forever. You knew the new 16-bit John Madden football was something special before you even played it. It was the talk of my school and elevated Sega's platform to new levels of interest among the student body. When I finally got a hold of a copy, I saw instantly what all the fuss was about. The pseudo 3D viewpoint from which it was played looked so cool, a combination of raster effects and sprite animation that gave the field a really nice sense of size and space. All the positions were on the field and the playbook was deep and varied. The passing windows allowed you to keep tabs on your receivers even when they were out of view, a feature that I adored. I really appreciated the AI as well. You could take advantage of holes left open for big runs or blast a long pass on a blown coverage, but it also played each position like it was meant to be played. Run too much and it shored up the defensive line. Pass too often and it reinforced its secondary. Reading about how it was made, it was Madden himself that was to thank for these additions. He insisted that if his name was going to be on it, he wanted it to be as close to the real thing as the technology allowed. He worked with developers at Park Place Productions to make sure the playbooks were well represented and audibles were a big part of the game. That the rules were accurate and that the players did what they were supposed to be doing. He broke down the team matchups by their pros and cons, giving you an idea of how to strategize the matchup. You couldn't dispute the results, because John Madden football was an instant classic. Hell, even the music was incredibly good, doubling down on that funky Genesis FM twang. There's a bit of digitized speech, and the game modes gave you a choice of regular season matchups, a sudden death contest, and the playoffs. The real fun came with two players, though. Scoring on your best bud and trash-talking his pathetic efforts to stop you was incredible fun. For months, I poured countless hours into it. Had Sega packed this in with the Genesis in North America that first Christmas, I believe it could have had a similar impact as Sonic did a year later. Its only real weaknesses was the lack of real NFL teams and players. First down! A year later, at the end of 1991, EA made sure to get an update out for the Genesis, John Madden Football 92. The graphics engine was mostly untouched in this one, but Electronic Arts made some great additions that made an already excellent game even better. There's a new instant replay system to take a look at those bullshit calls again, a new co-op mode where you and a buddy can play on the same team, and a bunch of new plays you can run. There were some new touches like digitized crowds responding to the big plays, new play calling windows, and Madden breaking down a scoring drive. 
You could even run a no huddle offense this time. The AI was also improved to play better defense and be more aggressive on offense. This was also the version that had the ambulance running down the players during an injury. I really wanted to show you that, but after four full games, I couldn't get a single injury to happen. The best part though was that pretty much anything that was great about the first one was preserved here and not changed. Sadly, once again we have to go without an official NFL license for the teams and players. Overall though, it was another awesome entry that continued to improve the formula and bring the game much closer to the real thing. In late 1992, John Madden Football 93 showed up to satisfy ravenous fans. The previous two Madden games had been just 4 megabits in size, but 93 here doubled that to a full 8 mega power. Along with that came a battery backup to save your game, a first for the series. The additions here were incredible thanks to the extra storage. There's more tackle animations, more teams, including some of the greatest in NFL history and a couple of all Madden teams. There's new play calling screens, deeper playbooks, a revamped AI, and more digitized speech. The visuals are mostly the same during gameplay and continue to serve the series well. Unbelievably, Electronic Arts still hadn't secured an NFL license for this, so again, there were no real teams or players. This had also changed development teams, now being handled by Looking Glass Studios. I was impressed that Madden had continued to add improvements that helped keep the game fresh and exciting for football fans. It was inching its way ever closer to being a perfect simulation of the sport. Around the same time that John Madden Football 93 showed up, John Madden Football 93 Championship Edition was released to rental stores around the United States. This was a special release that had 38 conference champions from the past returning to do battle against one another. It had the modes and options of the regular Madden, and you could only rent it from places like Blockbuster. I've read that Electronic Arts sold it via phone orders in limited quantities, but this game is still very rare. It's one of the most expensive sports titles on the Genesis because it's so hard to find, especially complete. Released in November of 1993, Madden NFL Football 94 marks some huge changes for the series, aside from the new name. The new 16 megabit cartridge featured a brand new engine with new sprites, new animations, a new front end, battery backup, 38 Super Bowl champions, 12 franchise teams, two all Madden teams, a larger playbook, four player competitive and co-op play, and all new digitized speech. It was a radical departure from the previous games, and everything about it felt new. The running and the passing games felt fresh. The AI was more competent. It was a new start for Madden that finally gave us everything to enjoy a real NFL-like experience. High Score Productions handled the development at the same time as NHL Hockey 94. These two would go on to become legendary with many EA Sports fans, often considered the best in their series. As expected, Madden NFL 95 made its debut in North America in November of 1994. Somebody at Electronic Arts must have been unhappy with the last year's version though, because once again we get a complete graphical and gameplay overhaul. No joke, this plays radically different from the year before. 
It was the fastest matin yet, almost to the point of being too fast. It was a heck of an adjustment after Matt 94 and the player sprites were completely different too. High Score Productions mixed it up even more by letting you play without the passing windows, forcing you to read the defense downfield without the aid of a close-up. The new engine also came with new animations for celebrations, tackles, runs, and stiff arms. It was far more than the simple roster update many had expected. While some hated the changes, I appreciate it trying to keep things feeling new, and the speed of this one was unlike anything in the previous releases. It was a big change, but still a trip well worth taking. When November of 1995 rolled around, so did Madden NFL 96. High Score Productions was back again, this time known as High Score Entertainment. Looking to evolve their graphics engine even further, we get new field visuals, improved player sprites that now have the numbers on the jerseys, and a bunch of new tackle, catch, and run animations. There's two new members of the broadcast team with Pat Summerall and Leslie Visser joining Madden in the booth. The two new expansion teams from that year show up and there is a new general manager mode that lets you trade and sign players and deal with the finances of the teams. But what made this version what it was was the create a player mode. You could create anyone, including yourself, and then go through the NFL Combine to set your stats before you signed with a team. Better yet, all the small things that had been missing in Madden at that point were added in. Things like fair catches, laterals, kneels, blitz fakes, one-handed swats, and even custom touchdown celebrations. Madden redid the playbook to really mix things up, giving you more than any game before it. The only negative here was the god-awful front end that looked just terrible. Regardless, it was a big moment for the Madden series, and content-wise, one of the best. This entry is perhaps one of the more interesting because while it was released on 16-bit platforms, Electronic Arts was completely unprepared for the 32-bit generation. Despite both the Saturn and PlayStation being on the market at the end of 1995, there was no Matten available for either of them. Electronic Arts cancelled it after unspecified development issues. With Madden 97, it was time for the series to be released at the very start of the NFL season. So in September of 1996, we got another visual overhaul. New sprites that lost their numbers kind of felt like a step back, but they at least fixed the horrible front end and play calling screens from the previous year. Madden on the Genesis at this point had really started to show its age, particularly since both the Saturn and PlayStation had versions of their own finally. They were more detailed with more options and playing this next to them felt inferior in every way. It's still a solid game, but the series was now seven entries deep and running out of things they could add and change due to the technology. It did have an option to play as any position on the field, but it was too little to get excited about with newer and better looking versions to explore. In October of 1997, the Genesis received its final entry into the venerable series, Madden NFL 98. I wanted to write up a big send-off for the series, but the truth is that this Madden was a quick and dirty update that didn't change much from the previous year. It does have some cool Super Bowl matchups and a few tweaks to the presentation, but otherwise it does nothing to stand apart. For what it's worth, it still played solid and the AI had really come around on the harder settings. The days of just throwing the ball deep to win were long gone. But the simple truth was that Electronic Arts was now on its second generation engine for the Saturn and PlayStation, and those versions just had so much more to experience. The Genesis had done its duty and given the world one heck of a football series to remember, but the fight was over and the whistle had finally blown.
Touchdown! Looking back on Madden and playing each one sequentially really gives you an appreciation for how it grew and changed over the years. While those that don't play sports games thumb their noses up and spit venom against it as being the same thing every year, those of us that paid attention and appreciated the details really noticed some great improvements year to year. They didn't always look or play the same, and there were always options and little touches that weren't in the prior year. It really wasn't until the last two releases that things started feeling samey, but even then, I'm sure many a broke kid that couldn't afford a shiny new 32-bit console loved the fact they still had a Genesis version to fall back on. The Madden games would go on to grace just about every platform under the sun, spawning a new release every single year. Some are good, some not so much, but they all are a staple of console gaming in the North American region. Personally, my Genesis experience wouldn't have been the same without it. It wasn't the first good football game I played on a console, but it was certainly the best in my eyes. It offered me a brief escape into the shoes of my favorite players, letting me defeat those dastardly cowboys no matter what was happening in the real world. Sadly, John Madden, epic NFL coach and commentator, died on December 28, 2021 at the ripe old age of 85. His contributions to the sport, the league, and to the games that bear his name will never be forgotten. He was a huge part of my childhood and a titan in every respect. Rest in peace, big man. There'll never be another like you. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.